Take a look at what's going on in the game world before I start my yammering. So I left things off. People were waiting for the DLC. Many people had bought the season pass. Sight unseen. Some really sight unseen because they bought it along with the one of the collector's editions. We've got an arc uh, on its way. And at this point I had decided to start building my so trading site. Support the game. Nothing down on that. <laughs> and we would get our first bit of DLC probably a couple months later than anyone expected. But people were waiting, hoping for something new, and I guess any time it would drop, there's going to be a relief that one, we actually got some DLC. It wasn't just a pipe dream given all the difficulties and stories about the developers and everything. And there was the Cat Sand Charge Pack. DLC 1, which had two major features. The first one was adding a new playable race, <coughs> the Castlevania, which most people thought should have been part of the base game, given their prominence in the TV series. And the second part were the arenas, what became known as the Thor and Lero arenas. These were at the time single player instances in a walled off area that uh, you just took on five waves of enemies in a fixed time period. There are a couple of problems with this. First of all, it was single player content in MMO. Second, the it had uh, bronze, silver, and gold reward, uh, rewards, but the arena did not end the once you had achieved the gold. I want you to plant so, the if you were really good, so and you took everything out, you'd still have to sit around for the time or two elapsed before it went in. And it was a little frustrating. And the next part of the DLC, which was also tied to this, was the introduction of melee weapons in the form of the cast sand ah, right. yeah. Definitely part of the lore. Yeah would cause a number of problems while also making a bunch of people happy. It did make me happy, I didn't think any kind of race, any kind of melee weapon made sense in a ranged weapon combat game. But melee had always been part of it. There were mods that were tied to melee. Doing extra melee damage. Let's keep going. But there was no melee skill that was upgradable. But Never mind, people wanted melee. This brought a couple problems with it. Big the mistake. most prominent one was really related to one of the types of arc balls. I don't know how much, I don't remember how much I talked about the arc balls, but a key component of the game was the open world activities, most of which centered on the arc falls. There were major arc falls and minor arc falls. Major arc falls are generally the ones that got most players together at once for the reward as much if not more than the challenge but there are also minor arc falls you would do uh, five minor arc falls to unlock the boss major the end of the major arc fall and the minor arc falls that existed as part of a major were standalone as well, but there were also some minor arc falls that did not have an equivalent part of the major arc fall series. And there are also variations. In this case, Helba, all of the uh, all of the enemy groups had at least one arc fall. Weak spots in the case. In this case, there would be sort of uh, extruding colored modules that if you Let's shot them on. that was doing crit damage I'm detecting faint bio signatures coming from the back and the 99ers the like there raiders. would be a uh, a pulverizer that would drop when you kill a certain enemy the pulverizer would have to be used to do the damage 
what this has to do with the swords is they did not take into account the damage swords did to compensate for the fact that you had, they weren't ranged weapons. So they did a fair, fairly significant damage to regular enemies. But when they used them on the arc falls, I thought for sure you pretty much one dying. or two hit them. We'll need cover while we get out of Combined with certain perks. Come on! There's always, always a one hit kill. So you could be sitting there slowly working on destroying the arc fall, and some guy just comes pulling up, whips out his sword, and it's over. All, you know, all the rewards from the drops that happen as more and more enemies are spawning. And we weren't very happy with this. And where the game was continually being balanced and rebalanced, weapon damage, and they would make a bunch of changes I'm going to get into after I finish going through the DLC. The, uh, this thing wasn't a complaint for most people because they would rather, much rather have a sword, and they liked what swords represented. So, this is much more of a complaint for those of us. We like our mechanics to be something that are not necessarily fixed, but knowable. And the fact that the damage being done to the minor art falls by the sword didn't really line up with the damage. At least the damage numbers being shown on weapon cards. So it was just, it was just a frustrating part. For the people who did not buy the DLC, now that we had the new playable race, which is essentially locked behind a paywall, this was a complaint to the players and people who had not pre-ordered the DLC. But they now had a choice because Ooh, instead of having to buy the season here. pack, the Should individual DLC parts were going to be sold separately. But it seemed kind of underwhelming. An item, something that people thought should have been part of the game to begin with, and in arena with some single player content. Those are the major changes. The DLC I thought we were going to bite it back there. Thanks for the help, stranger. So, the hope was, hey, DLC 2, can't be any worse, can it? <laughs> Just a second. See what's going on on the map. Get my arc falls done, too. Now I have to remember my DLC packs. See, DLC 5 and 1 are really right. stand out because of the wait for 1 and how 5 destroyed the game. But I can't remember a gunslinger is either 3 or 5, 3 or 4, arc slinger. Now I'm going to have to look it up. I should have been prepared. <laughs> as soon as I know the order, I know the content. Care of the grid here. And I'll look that up. Oh yeah, I got my second T5, my second uh, 5,000 Ego character today on PC. Of all things, despite having played on the 360 a lot longer, I still haven't drawn a 5K shield or grenade, one or the other, or both, on my main characters. And yet, after pulling a 5K grenade during the last event, my very first try after getting to level 8 of 7th Legion. And this is a hint for anybody listening who is still waiting to get a 5k shield. Your best bet there is with the faction vendors. In that case, Synthetic Genesis Technology or 7th Legion both have a shield package 
once you get to level eight, you save all of your rep and then buy 10 of them all at once, blindly. So that supposedly, and this it's just a rumor, it's not necessarily true, but it has worked for me both here on PS4 and on PC now. We're buying 10 at once. Improve, it supposedly improves your odds, particularly if you do it blindly so it doesn't have a chance to reset. Just buy one after the other. And then once you bought all 10, you then go review your inventory. In this case, out of the 10 that I bought, I got a 4998 OJ. But more importantly, I had a 5K. Now, the sad part, of course, is that the 4998 is a much better shield. <laughs> And the 5K allows me to do a tier 5 if anybody wanted to do tier 5. Nobody wants to do a tier 5. In the early days of the game, they were claiming that the difficulty tier would give you better rewards. But through practical play, everyone found out that that just was not true. Gear may have been better when you get to tier 4, but 5 wasn't any better than I'm gonna have to do a quick look up of which DLC was which. The I architect is going to here. here. We mean, should give it some space. Oh, it's already over. They never stood a chance. Uh. So this will be over soon enough. And I'll look it up. So I should say uh, the melee weapons would be a continuing problem in the game. Both because of some of their effects. The way that of all the items in the game, they were not tradable. Would unlock a uh, an uncommon sword just by finishing off the missions. Oh yeah, there was there were missions associated with Torlero arenas, but missions were you know, essentially a fetch quest, and then you didn't want to be the arena. There, there were some cutscenes in the first and last mission, but it wasn't much. Of your so we have a new class of weapon. Something like Senthos or the Liberata, that would have been a huge 
Hiroshima. Then you had the Ghoulinies, which were part of the game as one of the bosses, Yakuso, but they were mostly known as too mysterious that it made sense that players could play them. But there was another species, the Omek, that there was some lore tied to the TV show and lore tied to the pre-release information that tied them to the Volge, which were not supposedly one of the Votan species, but then they were Votan species. One of the lords says that the Volge came elsewhere. They have to land on the planet with the Omex. They kill most of the Omex out. That's the reason why they were here with the other Votans. They stowed away. Either way, the Omex actually became a plot line of the TV show. And people were wondering why, given their humanoid construction, they weren't going to be a playable species. Because proportional-wise, they would work with the current outfits. And there was a tease that this might happen when they introduced the Omex Dunrod, which was a variation on the very first charge blade, uh, a melee weapon. And so not only do we people a little upset because here we got a new melee weapon type, it's not tradable, it hits at a new playable race that we never end up getting and we don't even get them as uh, NPCs at some point. We get some other stuff we'll get to when I get to the other DLC. But first, while I'm there, let me quickly look up the DLC names. Do -do 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 -do. Just to be reminded. DLC 2 was Arcbreaker. Okay. That's what I need to be reminded of. They're ready for us. We'll show them how it's done. Should be fun. Let's do some killing. Good so to go. So let's introduce the concept of arc breaks. These were arc falls that you could call down in specific locations. And it also introduced a new class of weapons the called the cold boat? fire weapons Look. that were supposedly tied to the Volge. Uh, pretty much the, the big difference was that they were not hit scan weapons, but they were in the same class. A data so, signal is in range. And the LMG, you know, the cold fire was a slow, had a slow firing projectile rather than the traditional, not necessarily hit scan when you, it was you, what did you wielding find? it. Oh, but gross, dude. You could have It was close enough. And so this was a new class of weapon that you could only get from arc breaks. And there was also, besides the minor arc breaks, a major arc break. Which introduced something close to what people would think of as a, from a traditional MMO raid boss. So in this case, you had a new mission line, with new cutscenes. Right. Not particularly long or challenging, I'm gonna sneak around but it, the side. it was additional Should story content. Hang on to any data and once you complete the story mission, you would unlock the ability to buy arc spikes if are necessary to call down the arc falls Take a seat. For, for a standard minor arc break, you needed one. For major, you needed four. And on the map, there would be a small red icon representing where an arc break could be called down. So you would go there, play the spike. At this point, uh, trading wasn't a big thing, but because people have been playing so long before the DLC, the uh, script wasn't much of an issue. But it's become an issue in the uh, in the newer game, because now that there's a limit on how much script you can have, and there's no trading, and you earn very little script from anything. <laughs> it's more difficult to deal with them in 2015. One of the funny, just a little side note here is they continue to use the same cutscenes and everything else in 2050, and there are no cold fire weapons at all in 2050, so it's kind of a funny, uh, <laughs> cutscene to be 
showed weapons that you could ever get. And it's funny and it's sad. <laughs> sad use of that word. <coughs> Another signal. I can't believe how thrilling this is. So, uh, this really didn't get much more of a reception than the first one. The first DLC pack. Fairly short mission line. In terms of new content, it's pretty limited. But it was a new mechanic. Which, and a new set of weapons to collect. So this is a big change at this point because we hadn't had any weapons added other than the sword. So once again, people people were going, well, I can't get it can't get much worse, huh, for the next one. And the next one would be Seventh Legion. And a big change because of how it affected the open world. This is the introduction of incursions. Incursions, which are not in 2050 at the moment, were a different take on uh, a major arc fall. But instead of it being a fixed five miners that you, you did within a larger circle to eventually fight the boss, Instead, these were roaming miners of Volge, or raiders, it depended on which incursion type it was, that once you finally got it done, ended in a siege. So it's repurposing existing content, but in an interesting way. They also took a fair amount of time, and I think that was the main thing behind their design, is to keep it busy. <laughs> But the biggest impact they had were was how the incursions would overlap with the fall and cause them not to be finishable. Because the game would say, hey, this is happening here, this is happening there, so we're not going to spawn certain things until this is over. And then that never gets triggered even when you do finish it. So there were times where people did, were doing a minor, were doing the minor to lead up to the major end of an arc fall. And then the boss would never spawn because there was an incursion going on close, close by. And I'm not sure exactly, but I know people were measuring, trying to find out whether there was a particular radius that caused the problem. But anyway, it took a couple weeks for them to sort things out. And this was on top of some of the other problems related to uh, majors that to this day have never been fixed. Uh, the funniest one and once again, funny in a sad way, being when the boss spawns in the air, people were able to figure out that if they if they uh, got rammed their vehicle into where the boss was spawning at a particular time, the boss would detect the, ex the peak of the explosion at, at the ground. And because of this, the hellbug was spawn up in the air and you could still take it down because you could still damage the uh, the parts that got the boss to spawn but the one particular boss who sat there. on top of it was now buried in the middle really and there were times where you, you just ran out of time because even if you could damage it through a certain area of effect weapons 
just couldn't do enough damage fast enough. Luckily, it doesn't happen too often. And it's left people are trying to cause it to happen, it seems. <laughs> I'm getting shot up! But either way, incursions were a mechanic that, you know, it was nice to have more variety on the map, something new. But it didn't seem like content you'd be paying for. You have to go back to, you know, this DLC. That was something in the open world in case of the incursions, so everybody got those. The uh, Thor Nero Arena, they were unique to people who the DLC. But anything in the open world, they couldn't lock that off. So you'll have to open that door. Which leads us to DLC four and the last non-real game destroyed DLC. The gunslinger has introduced a host of new. Uh, Man, we have spirit to items and a new set of arenas. Captain Grant and his men with me. He Once again, more single player content. <laughs> a new mission line, a much longer one. But the way they made it longer was by making you have to drive halfway across the map. <laughs> As opposed to there being a bunch of interesting things. But as opposed to the five Thorlier arenas, there were nine Gunslinger arenas. They were much more interesting and challenging because they weren't just one fixed location that was wave-based. Instead, you went from the beginning to the end. A little bit better in terms of the people who paid for things, actually getting something that was unique to them. But not a big expansion. You have to remember, oh, people God. could see on the map man. that there were sections to an extraordinary conclusion. that you know, they, could, they could they be adding additional content to, and some of which there wasn't an easy way to get That's to them. So we figured idea, there'd be a mechanic. Outsider. And we weren't expecting there, them to add helicopters second, or boats or something, but there'd be some kind of mechanic so that Mommy tried you know, maybe this part of the world would be have more difficult enemies on it or something like that. Anxious to meet you. One skip the cutscene. Oh. You're going to die. Your friend is going to die. Fire away. First, we'll see how much pain you can take before going into shock. They just was all building up to something. At this point, four fairly underwhelming DLCs. They were spaced out okay in terms of release. We were definitely passing the point of. DLC 5 was going to tie everything together. We're going to make the season pass more than worth it. And that was not what we got. <laughs> what we got was the thing that destroyed the game. Because instead of giving us a bunch of new content, they decided to redo major portions of the game, change the fundamental mechanics of every portion of the game, from the way shields work, to adding in scaling. We're going to break all that down separately here. Right, I want to check one last thing here.
And I forgot to go get the data recorders that I still haven't gotten on this character. Mother? What have you done to her? Why? Why would you... We could have been so DLC 5 also introduced a new currency type, Corellium Cores. And now this is where I'm going to be, I I'm going to lose track of, I forgot whether expeditions were introduced here or later on. But let's, let's go to the Medic. main things that DLC 5 did. We had dealt with what a you, bunch Cutter's of changes in mechanics here. over the time. Originally, Sir, grenades were a consumable item. You'd have to pick them up off the ground. Then they were regenerating every items. Every then they were back to being a consumable me. item. Every single one. In 2050, one. they are regenerating. A soldier. But He's... in regular defiance, they are still Thank you. a consumable. Thank you saving my son. Where you have to pick them up I as you use them. Done. So you can throw grenades one after the other until you're out. But in the main game, in 2050, you throw one and then you gotta wait. Let's get that. You throw hell one, out you gotta here, wait. Sure. So in the original game, strategically you might use them. But in the main game you can use them anytime you don't have to worry. Second were shields. Shields were a fairly straightforward thing. You understood how damage could take. When the shield was gone, how much damage in terms of your regular health it took. But they introduced the concept of armor plates and threat level. Oh, threat level. Biggest problem. So armor plates stood in front of your shield and absorbed a certain amount. So you could still take damage while you had armor plates. But armor plates would have to be replaced. Oh, and... Uh, DLC 2 took away the simplicity of activating your ego power with the left bumper and added in two new consumable types. Your uh, spikes and stems. In 2050 you don't have either of those. There are spikes and stems that are ego powers. But now you have three ego powers in 2050. Bye bye. Let me see where I left off. Signal Buster. Get smashing the smugglers. I'm gonna do horseshoe. Okay. Oh, we gotta get our second arc fall here. Might actually get something decent as a reward. Drive time. So up to, along the way to DLC 5, we've dealt with change, so, you know, a bunch of changes in mechanics, stem spikes, uh, they decided that certain weapons which had features were no longer going to be features. I still have a sawed off shotgun that has eight shots. <laughs> oh, not again. And weapon balancing and fixing things that don't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense. You can have a, a double barrel that happens to be a sawed off that just happens to have a special mag on it, but it's the future. <laughs> but we've had limited new weapon types, we've had new mechanics, we've had changes to mechanics. This change, the armor plate, so there's a new step type to repair armor plates in the field. Otherwise, you have to go back to one of the fast travel spots to go to, to an armor repair, an armor repair uh, station, which is just like a ammo refill container. But we also have now have threat levels. 
where before you knew this weapon does this damage to this enemy, that security and this enemy does so much damage to me. To open it to expose the infrastructure. Now that wasn't fixed. Because the threat level is a modifier without an explanation. Time to shine. We're living with that in general in 2050 where almost all the stats are they don't actually mean anything. Which in a computer system I don't know how that's possible because the game itself has to have the stats to know that when I do something this happens, so why can't it show me that information on the car? <laughs> Initiating shutdown sequence. Threat level were determined based on players around. So you expect your big busy major art fall would have the highest threat level. Which would bring on different versions of the same enemies that were more heavily armored, did more damage, better weapons, things like that. But the problem was the formula to determine this you, was fairly, uh, fairly based, such as just having one high-level person in the area within the circle would raise the threat level whether they were participating or not. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, when they started doing contracts that were focused solely on conflict sites. This meant any conflict site near a fast travel location would immediately be a threat level 10, whether those people were participating in the conflict site or not, they, because they just happened to park there because it was fast travel location. You know, it just made it more challenging. Challenging is one thing when you understand what the challenge is, but when one time you do a thing Alert. Shut down sequence complete. It's different than another time offline. you do the exact same thing just because there's somebody standing next to the next to a bus booth Is just a frustrating mechanic It also made primarily the fact that you no longer knew and, and the threat level would change as people came and left an area. So this became a new griefing method where people would go specifically and stand on the outer edges of things that low levels would normally go to just to raise the threat level and get them killed. Sell off this crap. This was not a welcome change. Adding in the armor plates, some more weapon balancing that people were not particularly happy with, and the fact that now we've seen the entire season pass, I would say within a week, 80% of my friends list on the PC would no longer log in. I would never see them again. The game actually shows on the friends list last time that they were logged in. And I would join them. And the sad part about this is, at this point, I have finished the trading site. And people are using it. And people, and I've started adding social media features so you can share your videos and pictures and a bunch of other stuff. I'm thinking I'm doing something good for the community that's going to help grow the community and to have this happen. Well, like so many other people, I played for a while or like the, like the minority, I played for a while and then just gave up like everyone else. It wasn't the same game. It wasn't a casual game where you knew what the stakes were. And you go, yeah, that, you know, this, is some, this is something that's fun. If you're in the middle of shooting something that takes half a clip to kill and then two seconds later they're not dead and now it's taking two full clips to kill them. 
Are you gonna stick around? Are you going to accept that? Is that something that makes sense? That, that on site these uh, enemies are eating Popeye spinach and suddenly becoming more powerful in front of your eyes? I'm not saying that there was any way they could have done the threat levels that would have made the Raiders have overrun sense. More we need to get the dock workers to safety and clear the but Raiders But the biggest out. thing about the threat levels and about scaling in general was that in the original game was great that way with no scaling at all. That there were certain enemies that no low level was going to take on and beat. Unless they ran away a lot. <laughs> and for them, particularly with the Volge, since the Volge had shields that would repair, you only run away so much before they were back to full strength. And that's the way a game should be. There should be some enemies which are top tier. Instead, now there was a case where a, where a uh, the, the tiniest scrapper was running around with with layers of armor on it. Goodness, let's go! And I can imagine the amount of work it took to go in and create all these variations of all the enemies to represent different levels tied into the power based on the threat level. I'm not saying there was a lot of work done, but there was a lot of work done on something that was just a horrible, horrible decision. Horrible decision from a new player perspective because none of these mechanics were explained. From an existing player's perspective because now things that were, that made perfect sense and made it quite easy playing are not, are not valid anymore. Thanks. No, I'm getting out. Great, great exodus. They thought the game was struggling before this. What we what we became known as the uh, maintenance mode hasn't kicked in at this point. But when they started wondering why why people would only come back once they had used events, it was because the root mechanics that were in place that was just a mistake. And yet, I'm not saying they doubled down on it. They they never acknowledged that it wasn't a mistake. The players are wrong, and you have to remember that none of the people who designed the original game were involved. In implementing these changes. Anybody help me? Goodness. Let's go. And the that level of that arrogance becoming an ongoing the problem. The Raiders brought some big fella, called himself the Dark Overseer. If you take him out, the other should run. Which led us to the doldrums, which will be tomorrow's discussion. Doldrums of and the fracturing of the weapon pool. Raiders on the move. I saw. But the main takeaway is that in a game that already had had a significant drop off because of the COVID problem, we're now suffering a huge drop off because people who did not leave stuck around for the will probably fixed. We're now told that everything they do is no longer valid. If you keep this up, you're going to become famous. Where I'm at here. That, although I'm going to do that. Now we get to go waste a bunch of script because I already have a 5k shield and the chance of getting an OJ is slim. And it costs script in addition to rep. 
but my rep is maxed out. There are no weapons involved here. There you go. And now that we'll be selling them right back. Because not one of them's a 5k. Finish this off. Looks like I may have to waste PG here. I'm not quite at the max. That's all. That's it, discussion wise, today. I'm detecting an incoming arc fall. I have high hopes for this, but let's be careful. Looks like Dark Matter. Destroy the Monolith's 
Destroy the monolith's motivator. The monolith's attack map drive is vulnerable. Hit it with everything we've got. Five you can't dox bounties we need 99ers pistols Let's. so can't dox We'll use one of our mighty pistols for the crits. You want to find some trouble? I'm just the gun you were looking for. The rest of the team is ready. Transporting now. We'll go hunting. I'll get the 99ers. Of the old minigun mayhem. I think that's gonna put me near cap on PG, so tomorrow Good to see you. I have to spend it on something. Awesome! Hey buddy. Awesome! Yeah, still this is gonna be fun. Travel, you don't actually get taken off the map, but you can't move at this point, so you can be killed. Company, thank you. I'm free. I 
taking care of these roof guys early. Sorry about it. You won't regret this, friend. You won't regret this, friend. Okay, I've almost finished the map at this point. Haven't gotten to bronze. This map is definitely set up wrong. Not as bad as Matrix Nest. There are no enemies left on the map, and I haven't even made it to bronze. I'm out. I'll try to kill something on the way. Elite. Whee! It's time to go mental. Let's see where we are. In terms of getting to the next level. 11.49. So we're not close enough to make it worth doing those now. Let's just do our. I just don't care. There's, no, there's nothing worth buying. So that's just gonna be it. Leaving PG on the table. I hate that. Be back tomorrow to talk about the road to 2050.